Hi there, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to show you a tutorial on how to paint slash illustrate or sketch a tree, whatever you want to call it, on Procreate. For that I will be choosing a reference from Pinterest on a tree. A simple photography will do, so I will just take a minute and search for one. As an artist, you might understand the struggle of the Pinterest reference photo search that can take forever. So I'm glad that I finally found one that wasn't an hour later, but a little bit quicker and I'm just going to put it in my reference slot. Okay, so to start off, I'm going to be using an HB pencil and just a dark color, any black will do. Black blue, black red, whatever you want to choose. And I'm going to loosely start sketching out the tree trunk and the branches that will kind of dictate the very basic shape of the tree. I've always found it difficult to find an organic shape for a tree with the trunk and with the branches but bear in mind that we will be adding leaves over it so it won't look like a single stick with you know, 10 different arms or whatever. It will be covered up in parts, so we just want to have some sort of basis beneath it. Similarly, I'm going to add a very rough outline for where I want the foliage to end. To later add color, I'm going to be creating a layer beneath the sketch and the sketch eventually won't be relevant anymore so I can delete it. But just to kind of enhance this visual image, I've duplicated the group that I've put the two layers in of the tree trunk and the outline of the foliage. So I kind of just showed you how it looks in a bit thicker but I've deleted one of them again because it's not necessary. Okay, so next I'm going to be taking the colors from the image just to show you how the colors differ within the one tree. So I'm going to just start by eyeballing the tree trunk colors that are included and then I'm going to be taking the colors from the leaves of the tree and I'll show you how they relate to each other on the color wheel. You can already see when I start to color pick the different colors now, how they change on the color wheel. The point is that you realize within the tree there are different hues and tones of colors. So colors of green, tones of green that are more yellow and some that are more bluish. And that depends on where the shadow and the light fall, which I'll illustrate in a little bit. So excuse my hand being in the way, but on the right you should see how the color circle varies between more yellowish or more bluish tones, which yellow would be more to the right and blue would be more to the bottom of the circle around. And I'm going to be painting in the light, but first I want to show you another trick how to pick colors. So obviously taking colors from the reference picture is one of the easiest ways to get colors, but if you want to change them up a little bit, you can simply pick your color palette that you have on your photo, on your image, on your canvas, and then you can change the, change the hue and the brightness slash the value of the color itself by using that, um, you know, that adjustments here. By picking single colors, like I've now selected just the tree trunk colors, you can just simply adjust those or and then leave the others as they are. I prefer my tree trunk a little bit more reddish instead of yellow, so I've changed those and I'm going to be using the other normal greens from the reference image. So essentially I'm going to start using the Procreate pen, studio pen, I'm going to be painting in the tree trunk by using a layer beneath the sketch. So I'm not painting on the same one and I'm also not covering it up because I want to see kind of where I'm wanting to paint. Using the studio pen in the eraser tool I'm going to just refine the shape of the tree a little bit by thinning it out to create the illusion that the top is further away than the bottom 
but you know i don't mean to think even that far it's simply creating a bit more shape than just a single rectangular long stick figure of a tree Next, I'm choosing the re rectangular square brush <laughs> that I have mentioned many times. And yes, I will be putting it up on coffee. I'm trying to understand how to do that at the minute, so bear with me. But it should be out in May. So anyways, I'm blocking in the tree with the mid-tone color from the palette that I have put onto this canvas. And I'm simply putting in a rough thing because we're going to um, thin it out later. Now to understand how the light is going to fall, I'm just going to put a basic circle for a sun in and then some shadows. So typically in nature you'll find shadows are blue because, well, our sky is blue, it could be grayish blue depending on what the cloud situation is going on. Um, but generally speaking, they are cool colors in the shadows and the bright and warm colors are typically due to the lighting source. So if you have white lighting, they would be more white. And if they're yellow lighting like the sun, the color of the highlights is going to be more yellowish. Now I'm going to sketch in where I am trying to figure out where the shadows fall and where the lighting falls. By sketching it in like this, I'm getting a rough idea of the three dimensionality of the piece. So by not making everything on the right side yellowish and highlighting it, everything like that, it won't look flat, but by adding different bits and pieces, blobs here and there, it kind of creates the illusion of depth, which we want. In the reference photo, you can also see that there are bits and pieces that are lit with a more yellow green on the right part of the tree, but not everything. There are lots of bits in between that are darker and that are more mid colors. So now when I am blot blopping, blotting in the lighter shade of our color palette just one up from the mid-tone um, and also if you're when you're picking out this one make sure it's more on the yellowish green side of the color wheel um, by by putting it in like this i'm going to get an idea of what it's going to look like so that's how we're going to put the basic shadows and highlights in you could probably use any pen for this i'm just choosing the rectangular one because it is giving defined shapes or more so defined shapes than just simply a blob of color in the sense of like smudged together colors i want to make sure that they are sticking out they are rougher and i will be feathering them out later now i'm picking a darker color um, i'm not choosing the darkest but literally one up from the mid color and by just doing that it already looks like quite a contrast it's quite heavy dark but um, by choosing later on more different mid colors and I will explain that it will kind of come together. <laughs> it is certainly a helpful visualizer when I'm trying to understand where the darkest parts of the tree are going to be. Now I've chosen the old brush and I am erasing parts of the tree on the outside so it kind of creates more of a feathered outlook where the tree leaves and branches are kind of sticking out a little bit more instead of just being around or rectangular shape and that will kind of come a bit closer to realism I suppose but in order to not make a mistake now and regretting it and having to tap the back button several times I usually create two duplicate layers of the one that I am starting to raise so when it goes horribly wrong I can literally just delete that layer and turn the other layer on because I hide them Okay, so we're nearly at the end of this feathering out process. I'm quite happy with the shape of it and you're going to see what I mean by duplicating the layer in a minute. Okay, so I duplicate the layer, I hide one of them and then continue to paint on the other. So essentially I'm going to be choosing the old brush now on Procreate that I have adjusted slightly in its function so it probably looks a little bit different for you. Choose whatever textured brush you like, They something that kind of is like a sponge maybe. And then by only using the colors that you've already used on the tree, you choose like the mid-tone for example and you start to tap it in a little bit more so it kind of starts to semi-cover other colors that you've already painted in. So the reason why I do this is to kind of break up these rectangular shapes that I've added earlier and by adding more translucent fo foliage leaves 
around that are a bit more see-through because in reality most trees unless they are really big and thick and dense you know they are going to have a lot of holes in them where you can see the sky through if you've chosen the mid color earlier like i had then you will notice that by overlapping all the colors with the mid color obviously there will be a lot of mid color there and we want to make sure that the shading and the highlights are visible so I'm going to just erase the little parts now, but essentially add the different colors from your palette on top where you would want them to be. So I'm going to be choosing the darker colors to put in more shading and to tap them in with this brush really creates the effect of like bringing it a little bit to life as you will see. And then more and more inching towards the highlights and adding them where necessary. As you can see, I'm not following the reference picture in its like um, in its form, but I'm just basically creating a completely different tree with similar lighting and pretty much the same colors besides a tree trunk maybe. Okay, so the last color that I've chosen is a little bit more bluish green. By using different colors on the color wheel, so moving the cursor between the more yellow and the more blue green tones and the middle green tones, um, you will be able to create even more dimensionality by using those different ones. So I'll show you with a few arrows where I've put in that more green one, more bluish green tone. And even though you might not be able to see it like at once, which probably is better, it will create a little more 3D effect. Next, I'm choosing the darkest color on the color palette that we've chosen and I'm going to put in the very, very dark endings to where the light doesn't fall onto the leaves and essentially trying to even more bring out where the highlights are going to be sitting. You can see how the different mid-colors highlights that we've used so far and the shadows create already a shape of the tree and something that I didn't see while I was painting this because it helps to like step away from it and now I'm seeing it on this video. I can see immediately where I should have added more shadow. As you see, I did realize that there was a little bit too much of like um, um, a shape there. So I added that really high a light highlighter and I changed the shape of the tree a little bit by doing that. So I just put that on very little spots, on a very few spots where the sun directly illuminates the leaves, so the highest leaves basically. And I tried not to bring out the Z bridge again. So where you're putting your lightest colors, these places are going to be the highest or the further, furthest sticking out and that is essentially the message you're sending by putting it in specific places. So it helps to visualize it like earlier we did with the sketch of where the light falls and the shadows and um, kind of even now during the painting trying to see how that sketch from the light and dark relates to what we've done and what we can improve. I'm now just going to add a background. Usually a lot of artists recommend not painting on white background because it changes the way you see colors and your perception of light and dark. And I personally also usually start with a light gray background color, but this time I just didn't think about it. So before I wanted to do the tree trunk, I thought let's just put in some color in the background to complete the picture a little bit. I will make a separate tutorial on how to do grass and maybe clouds or whatever, but um, this is just very basic to kind of see where is the light going to go? How does the lightest and the darkest shades relate to each other? So in order to paint the tree trunk, I have created a clipping mask and then I'm going to start with the dark, darker color palette of the tree trunk. And I'm just going to sketch in a little bit where the shade is going to fall with the old brush. I've used that brush because it already has some texture in it and it does help when just lightly painting it in to leave a lot of the mid color there. Next, I'm going to be using the Procreate Studio Pen um, that I've adjusted a little bit so it has like a grizzly texture. I'm choosing that one because it is not a simply just a full blot, blot out line, but it does have some texture in it. So you can use anything like a HB pencil or anything with texture like the stucco brush is great as well. That I will be using that one later on as well. And I'm just simply going to put on some of the lighter shades where the light is falling, I'm going to correct that eventually with a bit more of the dark and just even some of the branches because sticking out, people will see them depending on how, how much you want to create a tree that is realistic, I suppose. Make sure to remember where the light falls. 
as you can see i'm not really orientating myself at the color palette palette that i've already chosen i'm just basically using between orange and red um darker colors of brown to uh, sketch out a little bit of texture and to just put down a few colors now uh, next i'm going to be using some textured brushes to go over that with some more shadows to kind of combine the different colors that i've put in i'm using a smudge tool with the old brush and i'm just trying to get them a bit more together so they kind of um, blur a little bit and then add some more textured brushes over. One rule of shadows is that when you're painting in shadows, now you have sh the leaves that are sticking out over the tree trunk and you want to put the shadows down. You have to remember the shape of the object on which the shadows fall to create realistic shadows. So when the leaf shadows fall onto the tree trunk, they're not going to be just leaf, dark leaves, but essentially they're going to fit around the tree trunk. So they're going to be in a kind of like a, a round circular shape, if you know what I mean, it goes around it. Just one rule to keep in mind, but I will be demonstrating that in another video, I'm sure. Now that I've put in some more shadows, I'm using the stucco brush to lightly paint over the whole thing to add a little bit of texture. The stucco brush is great for also rocks and mountains. I can 10 out of 10 recommend. Okay, I'm happy. I'm satisfied with all the colors I've got in with the basic shape of the tree. I'm going to adjust it slightly by using the studio pen. I'm going to start dotting in and creating more leaf shapes with the pen and using the different colors we've already got on the tree. So I've got a couple of minutes of footage where I'm going to show this in somewhat real time and then I've got a time lapse because I did spend quite a while on this. I, I think it's definitely my favorite part. By adding these little shapes to it, to the whole tree, you're going to notice that you are defining the shape of the bundles of leaves that are lighter or darker. You can make them overlap a bit more by choosing like mid-tones and putting them where the highlights are to show that it is a whole thing that kind of comes together and some leaves are going to be further back so they will be darker or even just random light leaves in the middle because they are sticking out and creating that kind of dimensionality. Now that I'm zooming in, you can really see the texture that the old brush has created when I've put these colors together. So a lot of the stuff already looks like leaves. I don't need to add too many more, but I'm just going to add them where I know they are going to stick out a bit. For example, dark in the middle of light or where the dark leaves come out and you see the blue sky behind to define that a little bit more. And um, also the light parts are going to be the ones that people will, will catch people's eyes so to make sure that those are defined i really like to add a lot of details but it depends like you have to make sure that where you're adding the details they matter otherwise they'll just go under i know that i'm someone who overdoes details a lot generally speaking so i need to listen to this advice myself but highlights and dark that is exactly where people are going to be looking first. That's what they're going to see first. And if you put the details there, it's all going to look a lot sharper and more defined than if you put the highlight uh, the details everywhere. Another thing that's more obvious now that I'm zoomed in a bit is the different types of green in this picture. So I'm going to put a couple of arrows in and you can see where the more mid green colors are, the more yellow green colors, blue green colors, and where we have dark, dark shadows. So yeah, now it is up to you how many details you want to add and how much more shape you want to get in there or actual leaf shapes or whatever colors you want to add as well. I know brownish, yellowish colors and reddish colors also work very well when we have um, warmer light sources. So. I'm sure I'll be making an example of that at some stage, but yeah, the detail is completely up to you. I know I could spend hours on this and really want to define everything, but I'm going to resist the temptation because this video is way too long as it is. I really hope that this 
video and what I've been talking about has helped and that you've been able to understand it, that I've been able to exp express it clearly because I know explaining is not necessarily my forte. So please let me know in the comments if there are any questions whatsoever. I'm happy to go in depth more on some topics if you'd like. And of course, I was only talking about getting colors out of the reference photo today. I can do one from complete scratch without a reference photo if you would like that. So yeah, just let me know what you would prefer to see. I feel like tutorials have been the most watched thing on my channel. So I'm just happy that I found something that people like to see. So I'm so excited to be making more of these and different types of landscape items. If you're interested in seeing them, consider giving me a follow or a like so I know that you've enjoyed this. Maybe another thing to add is that I am self-taught. I've never been to art school, so you know, take it with a pinch of salt, maybe or a grain of salt, or whatever the saying is. But um, yeah, I've had a lot of positive feedback on my work, so hopefully I've been able to give on some of that stuff that I've learned over the years and I've picked up from other artists. So there are just a couple of things that I did adjust that I haven't got on video and I will give you a close up of the final end result now. I wasn't too happy with the tree shape so I changed a little bit on the left. I painted in some clouds and added a lot more detail in and so here is what I did in the last 10-20 minutes that I haven't got on video. I just followed the same principles, I used the same colors so nothing majorly changed and yeah I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was helpful and hopefully I'll see you next time.